Hi, Mickey. How's it going? Beautiful. How are you? I'm very, very well. So, um, was the July show in Auckland your first trip out to New Zealand? Um, you know what? I believe it was because every time before that we just do Australia. I think that was my first time in New Zealand. And what did you think of the New Zealand crowd? <laughs> oh, they were amazing. Yeah, they really were. Cause they were on fire. The, you know, the beautiful thing about when we travel, like uh, to different countries, is that since we don't go there very often, like we once a year or something, when we go there, we are so welcomed with yeah. open arms, and they are so excited to see us, which is good because we feed off of that, you know. Yeah, for sure. You spent a few months um, in TNA uh, before signing with WWE. How do you look back on your time, like especially like in Ravens flock? How do I look back? Um, you know what? I was very grateful for that chapter in my life. It, it definitely, um, with every experience and every chapter, you know, you continue to grow and you get better. And I learned a lot from my experience there. And uh, and I left on when I left. I left on good terms. I left. You know, they they knew like when I when I went there. Like obviously, if you have a genuine love for this business, you know that the pinnacle is World Wrestling Entertainment. For sure. You know that's where. That's where I've all like, that's what I grew up watching. That's where I dreamed to be, you know. So, um, I had I had a lot of fun when I was there, and I, and I enjoyed it, and it was a good ride, and it was a good chapter in my life, and I, I learned tons there, and I used that moving forward in my life, and continued to grow and get better. So it was good. You went on to train in OVW. Um, how different was the training to the TNA and independent styles you've been in? Um, it was different in the aspect of, like, because when I was doing that before I made it, um, before I got signed and, and got set to OVW, um, I had done several camps, and I trained. I'd been wrestling quite a time, and I was working every weekend. I was wrestling these independent shows, and I was doing TNA, doing the TV there, and doing their pay-per-views, and then continuing to do my shows. And so you would learn from all these, like, I would always pull the legend or I would pull them aside and ask them to watch my match yeah. and give me pointers or whatever, whether it was Ricky Morton or, you know, yeah. that, you get really lucky sometimes and you have some really killer people on the show that you'd work with. And sometimes you would work with a bunch of people that are all in the same spot you are. So, um, but you, you know, you continue to learn and get better. And going from that to being an OBW, waking up every morning and training from 8 in the morning until five in the evening and still going to the gym and, you know, trying to, you know, make it. Mm. Because it's weird because you went from being on TV and, and, you know, having a name to having to go and, like, kind of disappear for yeah. a, little a little bit of time. But I learned so much there. Yeah. Like, I can't even explain because it's like everything that I learned, like, through those five years of trying to make it and getting signed and sitting in, in OVW for three years, and constantly fine-tuning my craft only bettered me. And, and I learned it humbled me because, you know, you, you reach that pinnacle where you're on TV all the time and you're kind of doing all this stuff and you made a pretty good name for yourself on the independent scene. And, um, you know, I was working Ring of Honor and yeah. I was a top star on there. I've been champion up and down the East Coast for different federations, small-time stuff, you know. But, you know, sometimes you, it, it doesn't get to your head, but it's like I just grew a lot. I, I just grew so much in OVW, and I'm so very grateful for my time there. I mean, Danny Davis was amazing to me, and I just learned so much from him and so much from, like, they had so many phenomenal trainers come through there from Lance Storm and Al Snow and Bill DeMott, and, of course, Danny was there the whole time, and um, who was the smartest man on the planet, I think, <laughs> or at least for me, because it was just, he taught me so much, not just in wrestling, but like in real life and how to ground yourself and keep yeah. like these little things that keep you grounded and keep you humble, you know, and it just uh, made me just get in touch with myself a lot as well and what I wanted from this business and what, because you can't have expectations. Mm. That's the thing. Because if you, if you have all these expectations, then, you know, you'll get your heart broken because yeah. you just never know. It's because it's, it's such an ever-changing business. So um, I just, I, I learned an incredible amount and I fine-tuned my craft and I became, you know, better than I ever was before. Yeah. And that, and that was really, that was really, really good for me. And uh, so, but it was definitely a, quite a shift 
you know. And plus, you know, I, it was my first time leaving because I've lived near my family for so long and I had my horses. But for three years, you know, I only went home around Christmas, really. Yeah. And uh, I was away from my horses, which was such a huge part of my life. Like, I'd spend at least, you know, a few days a week there. And now I didn't see them at all. And kind of, so it was just, it was, I got homesick and I went through, like, this whole roller coaster of, like, oh, am I ever going to make it to TV? Like, I've made it this far. I got signed, but I'm sitting here in OVW. I just don't know what's going to happen. And a lot of uncertainty and everything. It just got me in touch with what you, what's important in life and what you want and what you need and um, how much it made me also realize how much I truly love this business and how much I was willing to give. What was it like debuting on Raw straight into an angle with Trish Stratus? Amazing. I am so, because I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. I was supposed to debut probably five times before that. Oh, really? Every time <laughs> it got, yeah, like every time it got, it went as far as I actually went out there and it was going to be like CM Punk and I were going to be like a team. And um, it, we went out there and I was, I was managed him and everything. We had the match and then they pulled the match from the show. Oh, like no. it, it got that far. So, oh. um, and I had pitched ideas and storylines and all this stuff. And I'm so very, like, you know, you, it was frustrating because, you know, you're sitting there in Louisville and you're like, okay, oh, please, please, please. But um, everything that, uh, it worked out perfectly. Yeah. Because yeah. I couldn't ask for anything better. Like, yes, it took some time. Mm. And I got, you know, put up there and pulled back a few times. But uh, the time, that one was the perfect end for me. And I think it, I'm very grateful for it because I got to work such a beautiful storyline and really pull on the people's emotions and really... It was really good for me, and it was almost like, you know, a way for, you know, Trish kind of passed the torch to me, and I'm very honored yeah, to have had that moment with her, because she's, she, at the time, she was the top. Her and yeah. her were the top. That was the best. You well, know? you know, you were the first. And I was very full. So you were the first diva to win the women's championship at your WrestleMania debut, you know, and that was huge. What was it like taking home the win in front of that huge crowd? It was, um, I mean, I, I got chill bumps just thinking about it. Yeah. Uh, it's just. Um, I cried like a baby because, <laughs> you know, after years and, you know, it was so much, just so many, like that ro- whole roller coaster ride of being on and like doubting yourself and then, you know, not, and then saying, no, never give up, don't quit, you know, or whatever, like the whole roller coaster of emotions and just stuff that I'd went through, I cried. As soon as I stepped back through that curtain, I was just so cry and I thank God and my mom was there. No, oh, so, so cool. like, and it was just amazing. And yeah. so uh, I just I, I couldn't be more grateful and more thankful for the way that I came in, the people that I've had a chance to work with, to grow from, to learn from. And um that was just you know, everything like you know, they say everything happens for a reason. And so all those times when I was supposed to come up and I was like, No, okay, never mind, we're not gonna do it, we're not gonna do it and then finally I got this one angle, and it was the perfect angle. It was the perfect end yeah, for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause, and if I could go back in time, I wouldn't change a thing because it was amazing. The um, in Chicago in front of that crowd. And yeah. like, you know, you, if you remember correctly, the, the crowd like, totally switched halfway through the show, like it was like halfway through the match. Absolutely. I remember it well. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. The women's division in WWE has gone through several evolutions over the years, and at the moment, um, it seems to be evolving into more athletic products with a greater focus on wrestling ability. What would you say has been the major factor in bringing this about? Um, I think that it's like, huh? The, the thing is, if, if you the worst thing in the world is to watch bad wrestling. Mm-hmm. You know. So if you have, like, they can be the most beautiful women in the world, but if they can't wrestle, then it means nothing. Absolutely. They go out there, and it's just, it's like, ugh. Like, it'll turn the biggest wrestling fan away. It'll make them change the channel. So it's important, I think, for, that's why we've really worked hard with the girls to, you know, just be the best that they can be. You don't have to be the best in the world. Just be the best that you can be. And everybody's stepped up their game and everybody's working hard and everybody's continuously trying to get better and better until, so, you know, and that's important because if you truly love what you do, you would want to be the best that you can be. Yeah, and, for sure. And I think that, yeah, right. And I think it's important. And I think that that's what we're really like looking for it now. It's not just the pretty face. Like 
ghosts are a dime a dozen. We can have a million pretty faces, but if you don't have a genuine love or a genuine passion for what you do, then it shows, it shines through, and the people see it, and it just shines through on camera. It shines through as far as in your work and everything. So I think that that's what um, that's what's changing is, like, that people that we're having come in now, like before, you just always know the people that are really truly love what they do and people that are just there because. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. I think that even the casual fan can see that on TV, and, and that's what we're trying to really get rid of because everybody goes out there and they work and they pour their heart and soul, and if there's nothing worse than someone that doesn't care. Yeah, for sure. Well, yeah. Well, you're one of the few people on WWE's roster um, not to be affected by the draft. Have you ever thought what it would be like to be working on ECW or SmackDown, or is Raw your happy home? I am. Um, I've honestly, like, every time the draft comes up, I, I you know, you just, because you never know who's going to get drafted. You never know. It, it really is a gamble. And so I'm definitely, you know, every time the draft comes around, I'm like, oh, gosh, I don't know what, what. Like, I think it would be a, a cool thing because you get to work programs with different people that you haven't worked with before and stuff yeah. like that. But yeah. I started on Raw. I love Raw. I'm a Raw girl. <laughs> I love Raw. But, you know, you never know what, what God has planned. So whatever mm-hmm. it is, I'm, I will go along with it because it's for a reason, right? Right. That's, that's the only thing. That's, if that's one thing I've learned in my life is that there's a reason for everything. So... Whatever it is, it'll it'll be. And I'll just be the best that I can be, and that's all I can do. We here in New Zealand, um, we've got three wrestling promotions. And up until very recently, we really didn't have very many women. But over the last couple of years, they're starting to come up through each of the three promotions. And, um, you know, they're, they're working really hard and they're doing really well. What would be your advice to the girls who, like for New Zealand, they're the first ones to do it. What would be your advice to them um, to keep moving on and to really, you know, bring a higher profile to women's wrestling in New Zealand? I would say go out there and prove that we as women, I mean, it is 2009. Yeah. Right? To go out there and, and women are starting to run the world. Like well, there's women <laughs> and CEO, there's CEOs of companies or whatever, and there's no reason why a woman can't be just as powerful and important and provide just as much energy and provide just as much of a, like, um, with the beauty of the beautiful thing to be such a role model or whatever as any man out there. So go out there and prove that we are women and we are just powerful and just as important and just as good. If you can tear the house down just as good as any ma- of the men's matches or even better some nights than any of the guys' matches out there, yeah, that's when you know you're doing something. Yeah. <laughs> Mickey, thanks so much for your time. We really appreciate it. And um, all the best for the future and the championship. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.